All right, this is going to be a weekly recap from May the 2nd to the 6th, and I want to make this as quick as I can. I think I did a lot better this week, and I think to really summarize it, what ultimately happened is that I had a whole bunch of trades with set up sides. just don't have that much experience with compared to morning panic bounce plays, and I thought it was pretty cool how I went through all of these days, and I learned a lot from it, and again, it wasn't the most ideal setups I tried, but then ultimately the very last day I had... Just two morning panic bounce play setups, actually three, but two of them were more important, and I didn't even trade those the best that I could have, and that brought the week up, and sure, it's just a little bit amount of money, but this is the second week I am trading with a $15 risk level, and I like how 71% of my trades were according to the proper dollar risk level. If I can continue this, for this following week, God willing, I will then size up and trade a $20 risk level. And ideally, there are going to be more morning panic bounce weight setups, and I can continue to keep getting better at the other setups and continue to improve those so I can be more profitable with them as well. And as for the stats, I had nine trades. One of them, I just traded a small speculative size just to see what it's going to do just to gain experience from it. I had a, not the best winning percentage, 55, but I think what went in the favor is that, yeah, it was this, that I just traded more on the setups that did work out than the setups that didn't work out. And I think, yeah, these red trades were according to that $15 risk level, but I guess it was just ideal that the setups I took just were larger position sizes and that helped greatly. That was really about it. I barely made anything on the week, but again, this was like a break-even week of a bunch of setups that I was not necessarily, you know, best at, but then this one day, again, I didn't even trade this one perfectly this day right here, and I did miss a few setups and that really made it up. So yeah, uh, let's just go ahead and go over the setups one by one. And it's not too many, but it's at the point of the week where I don't really remember the setups that much. But I'm sure as I get into it, I'll start to remember it. Let's look at the first setup, which is on May the 2nd. And this was with SYXX, a bull flag setup. Let's look at SYXX for the 2nd. And the second is going to be this day right here. This was a pretty interesting OTC runner, very similar to the KGKG. KG, and this was the third green day. And it did actually continue the option for a longer period of time. Let's look at the second, which is going to be this one right here. I was in at 9.57 at 6.06. Let me zoom in a bit. 957 is right here 606 so why did i get in this setup i got in this setup because you can see if you just um maybe search on google it looks like a bull flag it has a spike in the morning started trading back and forth and the only thing i could have done better is that i should have had a trend line in place because this thing was super volatile at the time um i don't know maybe something like this kind of shows how once it was able to break the trend line on the bull flag, it really started to make a move towards the upside. And this one was kind of hard to trade because you can see it immediately when it started to work and it broke the line and just started the uptrend. So it would have been very hard, but I had the right idea in mind and it was a bit tricky to trade, but it was pretty good experience. And I got out at 10 o'clock at 599. Right here, I got out at 10 o'clock. Actually, this one right here. Let me zoom in a bit more. Yeah, 10 o'clock was right here. And I got out at 9. 599. And, you know, it did work out, but the price action was just pretty scary. And I could have risked this level right here breaking, but I was afraid that if this level breaks, it's going to be a level where everyone is going to want to cut trade. And it can have a really big, ugly red um, price action towards the bottom, but it did ultimately work out. It went from this, you know, 58 level as high as 73. Let me just see what it would have been like if I saw that 65, just out of curiosity. Yeah, that would have been pretty nice. A 7% gain. 
and I wasn't sized that much because it was a very volatile stock with a really wide risk level so I had that into consideration but ideally if I can see the same setup on a stock that trades a much tighter range I can be able to have a lot more size or I guess just eventually um, God willing trade a larger dollar risk level overall Let's look at the next trade, which is the same day VWAP did buy. I was in at 654, 1050. So I was in it right here. Right here at 1050. So why was I in this? Just to confirm. Yeah, the idea was is that it could have done the same thing as it did here. And this wasn't really much of a bull flag anymore. If anything, this was like a descending triangle because of how long it was taking. But the idea with this one is that it was breaking a trend, I believe, is one of the things I was looking at. Right? You know, and I'm in it right around this level right here. Yeah, 1050. Right after it breaks the trend line and right after it dipped... Very close to VWAP, closer than it was here and here. And, you know, I thought I could try to do a continuation. And, I mean, it did uptrend over the next few days, but not necessarily right here. And I also wanted to wait for it to start to uptrend a bit before I try to get in the setup again. Um, it didn't really help out in this case, but I think the setup was fine for what it was. It just didn't really work out. And I was out 1056 at 624. Right here, 1056 at 624. So I was out like right around here. It did continue to drop and this time get even lower than it was right here. And then it eventually looks like it started to build itself back up. And it did uptrend over a longer period of time. But I think that was a really good attempt for what that was. This one just didn't work out when I necessarily traded it right here. But, you know, it had one more dip and some consolidation in. It started an option, so maybe that's something I can try to be better at. Holding a position for a longer period of time, trying it again. But when I tried it right here, it didn't work out. There's nothing wrong with that. Let's look at the next trade, which is NWBO. This is a range breakout near high a day. Let's look at NWBO for the third. This one just had an official red day. But at the time, this was looking like the red day, but as you can see, it continued to uptrend. Let's look at the third. Right here, and I was in at 1013, 146. So let me actually just zoom in a bit more. 1013, 146, I believe. I was in it right here, and why? Uh, very simple, because this was previously resistance. It came back, it looked like it was going to break it, and it did break the 146 level, and then the high of day was right here at 148, so I thought best case scenario, and what I would like it to do is that we break out of this range in the 146 level, and then it breaks the day high, and this thing can really continue to uptrend over a longer period of time. As you can see, it was ultimately um, a red day, but it did ultimately uptrend over the next few days, and... I did get out at 10.15, 146.25. So not too much longer after I got out, just for a slight profit. It kind of worked. I mean, I got a bit higher. I got to the day high, but it was too weak, too much topping price action. And as you can see, uh, once again, it did end up being um, a mini red day before the option, but it did downtrend much more later on. So this was a good attempt. It didn't work out. At least it didn't just fall off a cliff, but, you know, it did try to make a move towards the upside. It just wasn't the time for it, and that's totally fine. I had a really good attempt, and I did trade based off of a $15 risk level, which is good. Let's look at SYXX for the fourth. This is a morning previous high breakout. Right about here, so again, a continuation with that previous price action. I guess if I can remove all of them, that would be good just to have them out the way. Let's go to the fourth 
pretty nice uptrending day. I was in at 9.31 a.m., 7.86. So I'll zoom in a lot more. 9.31, 7.86, I was in it right here. And why was I in it? Well, very simple. This was the fourth, but at the time, as you can see, it opened at 7.64. The previous high on this day was this uh, give or take 78 level so I was watching it to see if it was going to break 78 in the morning and then to be a part of a potential morning spike I did get in above 78 but at least I was able to get in it at 786 I got out the same minute at 824 824 is right here so I got in and out and because it broke that previous day high and I got out probably because it just uptrended so much and even though it got much higher, um, I just didn't have the guts to really continue to hold on to it. And what I can do with a setup like this one, it just really works in my favor immediately is just try to sell half and then hold on to the other um, to the other half and risk either my entry or the original dollar risk level or perhaps in this case even the day low, which would have been this 759 level. And yeah, that was a pretty good trade for what it was. I didn't trade that much because... Again, it has a wide risk, especially in the morning, because it could just turn into a tsunami panic. But out of curiosity, if I sold maybe at 86, after all, it did get as high as 94. Let's see what that would have been. That would have been a lot more in terms of percent difference. But again, I didn't, you know, have that ability to make that much money because. I'm not trading a very large dollar risk level, and this one has a really wide um, range, but ideally in the future, this could be a setup where I can make much more money. And um, yeah, for now, I'll just keep with this $15 risk level, but if I do good again this next week, then I'll go to $20. Let's look at SYXX for the fifth. This was a VWAP breakout setup. So the next day, first... I think official red day. The fifth is right here. Yeah, pretty big tsunami panic day. And this was very, very similar to KGKG. Let's look at 1017. I was in at 1025. So 1017. Let me zoom in a bit more. I was in it right here at 1017 at... I believe 1025 so I was in it right here and why well very simple it was breaking this trend line um, not you know too perfectly but it was clearly breaking this and then again I was in at 1017 at this 1025 level and I thought you know I broke the trend line now it's gonna potentially try to reverse let's see if it breaks VWAP and then continue to make a move towards the upside. It clearly did not work out here, which is unfortunate, but this is a setup that wasn't too bad at all. Maybe I could have even tried to have waited maybe right here because then it would have looked like an inverse head and shoulders too, on um, a shoulder here ahead and then maybe a shoulder here. But yeah, this setup just didn't work out. And I got out at 1020 at 10 flat. So I was out of it right here. You know, maybe it could have been a little more patient and then sell for almost um, the same price and, you know, maybe lose a lot less. But that's totally fine. And, yeah, it did ultimately fail. But I think this was a pretty good attempt for what it was. A little sketchy because it is up so many days in a row. And this ended up being ultimately a red day. But uh, for what it was, I don't think that was much of a bad setup, actually. And I, and I think that was pretty good practice. Yeah. I did trade SYXX, it seems like the same day. Inverse head and shoulders, 11 a.m. reversal. This is the one where I traded a puny position size, as you can see, an $8 um, position size, just to see if the setup worked and, you know, be in a trade, but not necessarily have a lot of money in it, just to learn from it. I was in at 11.39 a.m. at 8. 11.39 was right here. And I was in at 8. So why did I get in? Because this thing wasn't really down that much on the day. But it was down from where it was previously. From the 11 level. To the 6 penny level. Which is a 50% um, 
downtrend and I thought this was a shoulder here's a head and uptrends and here's a shoulder and now I'm gonna get in right at this eight level and in theory it can break the neckline it can make a move from this eight level to VWAP to this nine level which will be pretty nice that will be like um well like a 12 percent difference and then maybe ideally it could even try to end up not being a red day but maybe like a break-even candle or maybe even a tiny green candle and that would just offer a lot of profitability but I wasn't so sure with this setup and I think I was having a bit of a rough day because I was missing some other setups which were pretty obvious especially this one I can remember and then another one with NWBO I think two setups with NWBO so I just traded a small amount and it didn't work out but yeah it was pretty good experience I held this one for a while I got out at 1202.797 so right here, and why did I get out? Because it was starting now to look like a head and shoulders, a shoulder, and then a wide head right here, and I thought it was going to downturn a lot more, which it did. It got as low as 75, and it was good because, you know, I just traded a small amount, but I got the practice, and I was even willing for it to maybe, you know, I'm in at this 8 level, and then it downtrends, right? But as long as it doesn't break the shoulder here, I was going to let it be maybe a potential higher low, and then see an option over a longer period of time. This one did not work out, but later in the day, it did actually make a move towards VY, which would have been pretty nice. But, you know, that was a bit unfortunate, but at least I tried it right here. And I think that was a pretty good learning experience. As you can see, a lot of the setups did not really work out here, which is against me. So I guess to finish slightly green again, ultimately the last day, I was able to trade a few morning panic bounce way setups that... Um, I have the most experience with. I think that was pretty good. And with that, let's look at the last day. NWBO. Two morning pending bounce plays. Near the same time period. Let's look at NWBO for the six. If I can type it. Right here. Uh, first red day unless maybe it tries an uptrend this week and if it does I will be watching it if it can try to break out of this two dollar level in the morning and then it can be a morning spike that I can be a part of but you know if that's not the case I will definitely be looking at NWBO for potential morning panic bounce play setups because that is my favorite setup and this one is way up from where it's been you know, from the 70 cent level to $2, not bad at all, especially for a higher price OTC. I was in for the first morning panic bounce play setup at 934, 183.5. So right here at 934, I was in at 183.5. So right about here is when I was in at 934. And I thought, you know, it dropped from this 199 level. It got as low as... The 180 and now it looks like it's trying to bounce and you know I'm in it for that reason right here and I did get out of it the same minute at 185 right here is when I got out so I got in right around here and I got out right around here at 185 and I made a little bit but why did I get out of the trade just something about the price action didn't feel right it just felt like it was going to break this potential level where it just bought on that 180 and it's not going to ultimately reverse and if you take into consideration, VWAP is not very far either at 190. So I guess that kind of gave it, you know, more sense for the setup to not work out in my mind at the time, which was the case. And I cut it for a slight profit. It did break the level and I did trade this mouse, which was nice. Uh, but I did make a little bit there. Let's look at the other setup, the other trade, same setup, I mean, and this one worked out. I was in at 937 at... 178.5 right here at 178.5 so I was in it right around here this was a really good entry at 9.37 and why did I get in it especially when I just got out of it two minutes ago again I felt like it was going to try to break this level that it tried to hold just one more time and it did and then when it broke the level and it immediately looked like it was trying to hold itself and turn around that made me feel like, okay, it broke the day low again, but because there was so much 
buying action, so many bidders stacking up. It felt like this was going to be the official bottom, and I got in for that reason, which ended up being a really good move. But my sell here wasn't that nice. I sold at 938 at 181. Right here, I got out at 181 at Y. I drew a trend line. I did not mean to do that. Let me zoom in a bit more. I drew a trend line from here to here. And what happened was that I was a little too strict with it. And when it was at 1, um, 938 right here, you can see it barely, just barely broke the trend line. Just a teeny bit. And I cut it for that reason. And I ultimately got out at 181. But what I should have done was maybe not have been so perfect with it and continue to hold on to the setup. But I think I would have felt better if I were to have just cut my trade and sell half of my position right here when it looks like it might try to break the trend line. And then, you know, when it closed still up at 183 and it continues, then I would be able to have 50 shares left. And then what I could have done with the other half was sell right here when I got right to the VWAP level. Or I could have tried to be a little more patient, let it downtrend if it does, and then ultimately um, hope that it can be a higher low off of this level, which is exactly what it did right here, and then sell the other half. Um, again at VWAP or maybe in this case I could have been able to sell at a much higher price it did ultimately get to 196 it got pretty close to the day high as well and that would have allowed me to sell for a lot more profit let's just see what in theory a sell at ah, let's just say 188 would have been because that's something I could have realistically done that would have been a nice I would have been a lot more profitable this week too in a nice percent game, but I mean, for not having morning panic bounce plays in such a long time and then finally be able to, you know, trade it, I think that was pretty nice and hopefully I can do a lot better. And again, this was a very classic morning panic bounce play setup for what it was and I uh, got a really and I can see another one of these and I can be much more profitable and then continue with a larger size over a longer period of time. Let's look at the last trade, which is LWLG. This was a morning panic mouse play, but this one was influenced by the overall markets. Let's look at LWLG for the six. As you can see, it's been up trading over a longer period of time. Not perfect, because um, you know this thing is a list of stock, although it used to be an LTC, but it was pretty down on the day, and the chart made it look pretty nice for what it was. You know, pretty cool panic. And you can even draw a trend line for this. Maybe give or take this level right here. And uh, I'm sorry if the video just got yellow looking. I do have like a little thing where the screen starts to turn yellow after 11.30 p.m. So I can take into consideration that I should try to consider sleeping at this point forward. Let me zoom in a bit more. Yeah, you can see it broke the trend line. It was downtrending here, but then it started to accelerate the speed, and then it ultimately bottomed, and it did turn around and get to VWAP. I was in at 9.59, 10.67. So right here, 10.67 right here is when I got in, and this thing ultimately did work out. It got to... 11 and I don't think I traded enough shares. Yeah, I wasn't really that close to a $5 risk level for listed stocks. I could have done better in that sense, but I got in and the thing was is that this thing was downtrending. The same thing for the overall markets, it was downtrending. So then I realized this thing wasn't downtrending because it was playing its own pattern like a lot of OTCs do. But this one was actually downtrending because the overall markets were downtrending too. So when I realized that, this no longer felt like a proper morning panic bounce play. This felt more like gambling as the market at this point when it just kept downtrending going to try to reverse, which it did ultimately. Or is it going to keep downtrending? It just wasn't the same setup anymore. It wasn't what I thought. And I got out at 10.01 at 10.70.
right here is when I got out at 1070 and I don't mind my sell again it did get to VWAP but if it wasn't influenced by the overall markets I would have held on to this trade and I would have been able to have sold profitably here and this was like NWBO in that it didn't have a higher low off of this panic bottom right here and it did get to VWAP and then above it you know this is something I want to continue to develop the patterns they look exactly the same I've traded them a bunch of times and God willing I can be a part of the ones that really work out and you know slowly but surely make more and more money off of those and increase my size but yeah that was the case with this one and let's just see out of curiosity if I traded the right amount of shares I sold and so and, uh, and I mean that I sold also at 1096 which is VWAP let's see what that would have been Yeah, that would have been pretty nice. Not too bad for a listed stock. And yeah, that's really it for this week. Again, just a bunch of setups. And ultimately, the last day I got to trade some morning panic bounce plays, which were nice. And again, if I can do well this week as well, I'm going to try the $20 risk level. And I'll just continue to go forward from there. Uh, shout out to this person. His name is Gonzalez Core. Um, I got to hear from his side a little bit and he, he's mentioned a few thoughts that I kind of was thinking about but not really developed too much. I might consider swing trading setups as well. It seems like it is more profitable, especially when you look at SYXX, right? You know, this thing had a really massive uptrend and even if I could have just traded a $100 position, this thing would have been a super nice multiplier, so... I'm going to have that into consideration. Ideally, there can be more OTCs that are uptrending and offering nice moves, even in this month of May. And, yeah, um, I just got to keep going, keep going at it, not burn out, or at least try to maintain myself. And we'll see what this week brings. But um, if any of you who are still watching it at this point, thanks. If you have any comments or questions, I'll try to answer it to the best of my ability. And, yeah, that's all I have for this weekly recap.